I'm a little bit scared of this death. Moose drool. <laughs> Look, he's drooling. He's drooling. Uh, how did they bottle this? Moose drool. Brown ale. Big Sky Brewing Company. Missoula, Montana. Probably a fine place. I think I flew over it once. <laughs> Going somewhere else. Ooh, that's dark. All right, we are up to chapter nine of Alma. Chapter nine, it's got, it's got the magic phrase, but it doesn't happen until like the last page and it's a whole bunch at once. So I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna drink and read, okay? All right, chapter nine of Alma. Let's read uh, the, the caption up here. See if it prepares us any. Alma preaches to the people of Ammonihah and calls them to repentance. His testimony rejected. Verse 1. Drink it for the hell of it. If that's moose drool, I think I want a French kiss of moose. Damn, it's good. And again, I, Alma, having been commanded of God that I should take Amulek and go forth to preach again unto the people, or the people who were in the city of Ammonihah, not to be accused, you know, confused with other people, <laughs> or them. <laughs> Shit, there isn't it came to pass. I mean, didn't highlight it. It came to pass, this is verse 1, as I began to preach unto them, they began to contend with me, saying, hang on a minute, I have a legitimate drink here. I missed that one. I'm skimming and uh, highlighting, but that one got by me. Verse 2, they were saying this to people. Who art thou? Suppose ye that we should believe the testimony of one man, although he should preach unto us that the earth should pass away. 3, now they understood not the words which he, which they spake, for they knew not that the earth should pass away. And that's a good thing somehow. <laughs> Four. And they said also, We will not believe thy words, if thou shouldst prophesy that this great city should be destroyed in one day. Interesting there. What's the point of that? If I wanted to call some street preacher phony, I wouldn't dare him to destroy the city because it wouldn't even occur to me. It's so ludicrous. <laughs> I'd have asked for something a little better, something positive, possibly. Although this god seems really good at doing uh, destructive shit. That doesn't show me much gift at life affirming positive shit. That's for the next life. Yeah, yeah destroyed one day. Fine. Uh, now, they knew not that God could do such marvelous works. Yeah, good at that. For they were hard-hearted, a hard-hearted and a stiff-necked people. This is another official bootleg. I guess I don't need to tell you what they're doing and who. And they said, 
who is God? Who is God that sitteth no more authority than one man among his people? They, these, I mean, who is this God? They don't even capitalize. <laughs> Unless they call him by the name God or Jehovah. Yeah, yeah, he can't send more than just one guy on a peaceful mission. <laughs> Yeah, then woman to declare unto them the truth of such great and marvelous things. <coughs> Seven. And they stood forth to lay their hands upon me. That's Alma talking. But behold, Alma Jr. Uh, they did not. And I stood with boldness to declare unto them, yea. I did boldly testify unto them, saying, eight, hang on, Nice, it didn't come close to the original. <laughs> it's interesting though, I like some of the things they did. It's more faithful. I like it when they do their own thing a little interpreted. Dream Theater, excuse me. I'm, I'm ranting here. I'm rambling. Uh, verse 8. Behold, O oh ye wicked and perverse generation. Way back then. <laughs> How have ye forgotten the tradition of your fathers? Yea. How soon ye have forgotten the commandments of God? That started off as a question and it turned into something else. Doesn't he have a question mark at the end of it, per se? You know, say, fix that problem since 1966, when this book came out. Nine. Do ye not remember that our father Lehi was brought out of Jerusalem by the hand of God? Yeah, that was a really efficient operation. Too bad I, I've already covered that. That was funny shit. Do ye not remember that they were all led by him through the wilderness? Hmm. Ten. And have, have ye forgotten so soon how many times he delivered our fathers? Out of the hands of their enemies in the good old days, and preserve them from being destroyed even by the hands of their own brethren. Eleven, yea, and if it had not been for his matchless power, and his mercy, and his long suffering towards us. We should unavoidably have been cut off from the face of the earth. Long before this period of time, and perhaps been consigned to a state of endless misery and woe. Gnashing teeth and all that shit. Well. Sorry, the book ain't cooperating, so playing my own game now. Behold, now I say unto you that he commanded you to repent. Except ye repent of all that shit you've been doing, uh, 
ye can no wise inherit the kingdom of God. But behold, this is not all. <clears throat> That's all. Um, he has commanded you to repent, or he will utterly destroy you from the face of the earth. Yeah, he's going to wipe you out. Yea, he will visit you in his fierce anger, and in his fierce anger he will not turn away. Verse 13. Yeah. Behold, do you do ye not remember the words which he spake unto Lehi? That's God. You know, Alma's claiming God said it to Lehi. Saying that, inasmuch as ye shall keep my commandments, ye shall prosper in the land. And again, it is said that inasmuch as ye will not keep my commandments, ye shall be cut off from the presence of the Lord. 14. Now I would that ye should remember that inasmuch, boy, that's a phrase I could have used. <coughs> it's all one word, by the way, inasmuch. As the Lamanites have not kept the commandments of God, they have been cut off from the presence of the Lord. Now we see that the word of the Lord has been verified in his things, and the Lamanites have been cut off from his presence from the beginning of their transgressions in this land, in the land. Not this land, no land. 15. Nevertheless, I say unto you that it shall be more tolerable for them in the day of judgment than for you, if ye remain in your sins. Yea, and even more tolerable for them in this life than for you, except ye repent. 16. For there are many, pro uh, many promises which are extended to the Lamanites, for it is because of the traditions of their fathers that caused them to remain in their state of ignorance. They've been lied to, brainwashed. Don't you just hate childhood indoctrination? It's just so fucking unfair. It's even chicken shit. <sighs> Therefore, the Lord will be merciful unto them and prolong their existence in the land. Even let them wipe all of you fuckers out. Because, you know, you screwed up somewhere. Kept screwing up. Tried to warn you. Bunch of fucking crazy riddles. <laughs> and at. Wait, uh, yeah, 17. And at that same. Wait, and at some period of time, they will be brought to believe in his word. And to know of the incorrectness of the traditions of their fathers. And many of them will be saved. For the Lord will be merciful unto all who call his name. I've done that. Called all of them. All the ones I, I could find out about. <laughs> 18. But behold, I say unto you that if ye persist in your wickedness, that your days shall not be prolonged in the land. For the Lamanites shall be sent upon you, and if ye repent not, they shall come in a time when you know not, and ye shall be visited with utter destruction, and it shall be according to the fierce anger of the Lord in the latter portions of this book. 19. I need a drink. For he will not suffer you that ye shall live in your iniquities to destroy his people. I say unto you, Nay! He says unto you, not ye. Whatever. He would rather suffer that the Lamanites might destroy all his people who are called the people of Nephi 
if it were possible that they could fall into sin and transgressions after having had so much light and so much knowledge even unto them of the Lord their God. That makes fuzzy logic sense. Or not. 20. Yay! After having been such a highly favored people of the Lord. Yay! After having been favored above every other nation, kindred, tongue, or people. <laughs> after having had all things made known unto them, according to their desires and their faith and prayers of that which has been and which is and which is to come. 21. Having been visited by the Spirit of God, having conversed with angels, and having been spoken unto by the voice of the Lord, and having the spirit of prophecy, and the spirit of revelation, because they're different somehow, prophecies and revelations, and also many gifts, the gift of speaking with tongues, which I won't even try to do. <laughs> I haven't done acid in years, so I, I could have done it back then. Maybe. Uh, and the gift of preaching, and the gift of the Holy Ghost, and the gift of translation, as in being able to translate shit with those funny glasses, maybe. Or maybe he can do it without them. But I think they were, yeah, he's got them, though. He can do it. He needs the glasses, I think. 22. <laughs> Holy specs. Yay! And after having been delivered of God out of the land of Jerusalem by the hand of the Lord, and having been saved from famine and from sickness and all manner of diseases of every kind, and they having waxed strong in battle, that they might not be destroyed, having been brought out of bondage time after time, and getting put in by God. I mean, he said, I did that shit to you. It looks circum like this, you know, you're a victim of circumstance, but no. Beware of your God. <laughs> having been brought out of bondage time after time, and having been kept and preserved until now. And they have been prospered until they are rich in all manner of things. 23. It's still, I got drinks coming, but I can't wait. Moose drool, people. Who to thunk? <clears throat> it works. So we. I think I was at first 25. <laughs> and now, for this uh, cause, that ye may not be destroyed, <coughs> the Lord has sent his angel to visit many of his people. I guess I guess Santa Claus has got one up on him, you know. He could hit every house in one night. But apparently you have to schedule an appointment with uh, the big G. 
or is he just his angels? <laughs> He's understaffed. No wonder he recruited Moroni. Get up your old fart. <laughs> we need another angel. Heaven needs angels. Damn it! <laughs> Declaring unto them that they must go forth and cry mightily <laughs> unto this people, saying, Repent ye, for the kingdom of heaven is nigh at hand. Die! He's getting some more antique words in there. Right on, Joe. You can do it. <laughs> you did it. <laughs> they believed it. <laughs> 26. And not many days hence, the Son of God shall come in His glory. Whose glory? <laughs> and His glory shall be glory of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace, equity, <laughs> you're paying into it your whole life, and truth. You know, it's like afterlife insurance. <laughs> Just in case. <laughs> Full of grace, equity, and truth. Full of patience, mercy, and long-suffering. Quick to hear the cries of his people. And to answer their prayers. That's what you call quick? What would you call like a glacier? A sled? <laughs> a hockey puck? 27. And behold, he cometh to redeem those who will be baptized unto repentance through faith in his name. 28. Therefore prepare ye the way of the Lord, for the time is at hand. It's also nigh. That all people shall reap a reward of their works according to that which they have been. If they have been righteous, they shall reap the salvation of their souls according to the power and deliverance of Jesus Christ. And if they have been evil, they shall reap the damnation of their souls according to the power and captivation of the devil. 29. Now, behold, this is the voice of the angel crying unto the people. Yeah, really, I mean, what's with the select few witnesses? We got to take their word for it. And you think, you think I'm being unreasonable? Asking for a little more, uh, how about a little bit more there? I'm not buying it yet. Thirty. And now, my beloved brethren, for ye are my brethren, and ye ought to be beloved, and ye ought to bring forth works which are meet for repentance, seeing that your hearts have been grossly hardened against the word of God, and seeing that ye are a lost and fallen people. So they just let him, I mean, they try to grab him, and for some reason he's Teflon-coated. And they've just let him do all this talking. Okay, verse 31. Now, and now I'm legit. Now it came to pass that when I, Alma, had spoken these words, behold, the people were wroth with me. <laughs> uh, because I had said unto them that they were a hard hearted and stiff necked people. Yeah, what? Well, kick your ass for that too, Alma Jr. Just kidding. <laughs> He's number two. 
32. And because I said unto, you, unto them that they were a lost and fallen people, they were angry with me. Did you talk about their mamas? <laughs> and they sought the lead, their hands upon me, that they might cast me into prison. So we're repeating ourselves now. But he's got to tell it. The narrator told it, now he's telling it. 33. But it came to pass that the Lord did not suffer them that they should take me at that time and cast me into prison. At that time, huh? Maybe later. 34. Thank you, 34. I think that's the last one. Thirty-four, and it came to pass <clears throat> that Amulek went and stood forth and began to preach unto them also. And now the words of Amulek are not all written. Nevertheless, a part of his words are written in this book in chapter 10. And I think there's a drink or two. Uh, yeah, I'll drink scotch. Peace. The fuck. Out. Have a wonderful, whatever the fuck it is.